Welcome everyone to the last video in our R and Data Science course and I want to use this final video to show you how to create web applications uh, using the Shiny package. So I haven't had much experience uh, myself with creating web apps and Shiny but still I think it's um, a worthy endeavor to go on and Shiny is really powerful so this is why I'm, I learned a bit about it and I, I, I show you how it works. And the easiest way to set up a web application using, uh, using Shiny is to simply create a, a Shiny web app using this plus button here. If you click on it, you can select some name and then, then it will create uh, an R script in the new directory you specified. And if you do that, then the result of this is uh, a script like this. And as you will notice, the, the typical run button that you have for a script is exchanged for a run app button. Uh, bottom. So let's um, uh, run it. And as you can see here, this is the standard app that um, comes uh, basically pre-installed when you start the script. And this is some uh, data from the old faithful guys here. And there you can interactively choose the number of bins for the histogram. And if you choose the number of bins differently, then the histogram, of course, will change. And the uh, histogram for this data set is plotted differently. And basically, this is what Shiny can do for you. It can actually um, make you create an application that reacts to the user's input. And um, this is what we want to do. We want to create a... Um, simple app that can do similar things and I will show you how so what you um, I will show you in a second what we want to go uh, look at first um, let me minimize this and what you will see here after you have uh, clicked the run uh, run app button it's a reload app button uh, button now which you can uh, click if you change your uh, code here and then you can simply reload it and then the app of course will reload um, so you don't actually have to um, um, close the application every time you want to change something which is nice and also what you will see in the console here is that it says something like listening on http and so on and then there's some ip address here which means that your console basically right now is um, working um, all the time and waiting for a user's um, interaction with with the application so whenever I change something here then possibly some code is run here and um, the histogram changes basically so these are two things you have to watch out for because now that the console is busy all the time I can do whatever in here but still nothing happens of course once I close the app all the commands I put into console are run um, afterwards but still you might take to, uh, that into account. All right, so let me show you what we, um, what kind of app we want to create. As I said, it will be something simple, but there are great examples out uh, in the internet where you can find how Shiny uh, is used. And here we simply want to use some Taylor Swift data to um, display, well, her uh, album songs. So here I could, for instance, choose a different album, say Fearless, and then it will show me um, show me the songs from that specific album. So here, as you can see, the uh, table that we have here reacts to my input. And similarly, um, here in this uh, part, I can filter songs by attribute. So if I want to filter the songs by some attribute called energy. I really don't know what um, what is the point of that attribute or how it is defined. Um, I got all the data from the Spotify API. Um, so we'll just work with the, the attributes that Spotify uses. In any case, the point here is to just create something simple to interact with. And here we can um, filter, for instance, the range. And I say, if I want to look at only songs that have an energy between 0.3 and 0.4 i can simply change the sliders here and as you see 
this table um, changes accordingly and also is immediately sorted so that the song with the um, with the highest energy is always on top and similarly I have a plot here that actually shows the distribution of the energy for a specific album so in the the, um, the large dots here are the median values of that attribute so in this case the energy um, for each album and then this um, plot is sorted um, or the rows are sorted according to um, the median energy and uh, jittered points here um, depict the energy of the single songs from that specific album. And if, of course, I change the attribute again, then this plot will also change. So as you can see here, we have some uh, simple reactivity and um, this is what we want to go for in this video. So let's start doing that. Let us go uh, back to our um, to the code that created our uh, very first sh shiny app that comes pre-installed when you start a new app. And if we look at it, we'll see um, three to four things um, here. First of all, of course, the shiny library is loaded, the shiny package. Then there's something called UI, which stands for the user interface. So everything you see in this app here is the user interface. What you actually as a user interact with is the user interface. So what the user interface does is it specifies everything that a user can see and can interact with. And then we have a second part, which is called the server. This is basically that um, the, the engine that runs all the computation. So if you change the slider, then in the background, the server will have to rerun the computation to plot this histogram. And that is what actually needs to be run when you change uh, something on the user interface is described in the uh, server. And then there's this run application um, command from Shiny uh, or the Shiny app command that basically starts the application with the specific user face and the specific server. So we have two parts we need to um, define which is the user interface. Let's um, empty that so we can change that accordingly to our Taylor app or to our Taylor Swift app. And we also empty the server. And if you reload the app now, you will of course see nothing is in there, but still it's a valid app. It's basically a minimal example. Um, and this is what every shiny app needs. This is the bare minimum. And so let's start filling the user interface as we saw in our um, app that we want to uh, aim at. We have basically three rows, one row here, a second row here, and then a third row for the, um, uh, for the plot. And we can simply, and in each row, in the first and second row, we have like a sidebar layout. We have always a one column that is a bit smaller than the other, which is called a sidebar layout. And we have a sidebar panel here and a main panel here. So basically to describe the UI, the user interface, it's a matter of simply um, writing the, according, uh, the corresponding code for that. And in this case, it's really simple. If we want to have one row of a sidebar layout, you simply add sidebar layout. And in, so this gives you the first row basically. And there we want to have one sidebar, um, sidebar panel. And we also want to have a main panel. So here in our example, we can uh, have the album input, right? This is where I choose my album from. And then in the main panel will be the table, uh, the album information should go there. And if I want to have a second row, I can simply add a, another sidebar layout to that. Let's do it like this. And there we'll have, I don't know, I think it's the song attribute. Yeah, the song attribute was chosen there, so they will deal with the song attribute. And there is another table again, according 
to the song attribute. And then um, we could also have another row um, there we don't want to have a, a sidebar uh, layout so we just add a fluid row to this and there we can also have a main panel and this is in the main panel there's the plot. So if we reload this app now then we see okay there is at least some placeholders now for the sidebar panels and the rest is still empty. Okay, so let's let's fill that with some input. Um, actually, what we need to do is handle the input and output now. As you can see, the server function is uh, defined according to these two variables, input and output. So of course, the server uh, does the interaction for it, so it needs the input and it will give us the output and then the user interface will display uh, both. And first let's start to add a simple input to simply add this, um, add this choice here. So I want to get a drop-down menu that, um, that I can choose, choose stuff from. Okay, in order for that to work, I will of course need to um, get my data um, first. So let's also light the uh, load the tidyverse package and then load the table data. So in this case, um, I have saved the the, the file that co uh, collects all the information in a CSV file. So which is called my Taylor CSV. If you want to. Um, uh, get the data you can simply go to this dummy website I set up last uh, in the last video and there you can um, download the CSV file. If you're interested in how I um, downloaded this uh, data set from Spotify it's all done in R you can uh, download the source code as well but it's not necessary for this course only if you're interested in it. Okay so we need to load the data and we will need to make sure that the data is loaded in a specific format. I want to have all of the, uh, most of the stuff except for the attributes. I want to have it uh, loaded as character values, so I specify this manually. And from that I can easily extract the, the album names. So in this Taylor data set there is a column album and um, I get the uh, I want to have the unique values from that so I have the choices for my um, drop down menu. Okay so in this sidebar panel I want to add the, the input and to create input or uh, input mechanism basically on the user interface you can add all sorts of inputs. Uh, input function. There's text input, text area input, date input and what we need is select input. So select input handles um, the input where the user can select from a predetermined list which is exactly what we want to have here. So let us um, use the select input function to handle, uh, to handle that and the select input is, has something in common with all input functions, namely that the first two um, arguments are always the same. The first one is the input ID, which is an important string you need to um, define in order for the for it to for whatever is the input here to be accessible on the server and later on. So you need to be able to ID it. So let's name that um, choose album this is will be the ID later on the label will be simply album if we look at this this is what is the the label of this so here I simply want to say app label and then the next arguments of the input is specific to our um, um, input so here to select input and select input uses choices so I will 
simply say choices is equal to the variable albums. Okay, so that should be all that we need. And if we look at our app now, we see, okay, there is a drop down menu now and we can actually choose from all possible albums. That is great. But of course, nothing is happening yet because um, what we now define was only this input mechanism. But of course, the server side of this web application doesn't know what to do with it. So in order to display a table here, we will need to um, make sure that the server, whenever one of these values changes, selects the um, or filters the data set so that it only uh, displays um, the songs that correspond to, for instance, the album level. Okay, so let us do that. So on the server side, so we need to go to the server function we simply um, can create a uh, new output variable, which we do by um, using the base R syntax, by, um, uh, by adding another column basically, or another part to this output list via this dollar sign, and then simply say, I don't know, I want to have the new variable album table. And there I can, um, specify that I want to let this variable be a table. So I need to, in the terminology of Shiny, I need to render a table. So, or you could also say I need to create a table. So what I do is I use the function render table. This says, okay, my output will be a table. And often you also want to use multiple lines of codes to determine how the table looks later on and for that you will need these curly uh, brackets here i only do one line of code so it doesn't matter but um, still i like to do, um, um, write them out every time and then here simply add the code that is supposed to um, create the table so we need to filter our our initial data set according to the chosen album so we need to filter this. So the album variable or the album ca uh, column on the data set is supposed to be equal to the chosen um, value from our input selection. And to access the input now, we simply use input dollar sign and then we use the ID we specified early on. So this is what I meant by saying um, we need to declare an ID so we can access the this specific input later on. So this needs to actually be a unique, um, the ID needs to be a unique uh, variable name, so no spaces and so on. And um, otherwise it, it won't work to um, use it like this here. And other than that, there's not really a restriction. It needs just to be a, a valid variable name and then you would simply work. Um, work with your filter function as you would normally would. So saying the album column is supposed to be uh, equal to the whatever is chosen. And then we want to select the columns number, song and duration because this is what is depicted in our app. So this is the table we want to go for here. So this is the code that is supposed to be run and that's actually all that we need. And if we reload this app now, We'll see, of course, I can still change stuff, but again, nothing happens. So this is because we have now declared what the server is supposed to be able to do um, once we change the value in our input, but we did not um, declare what to do with this input. This is because on the user interface, we have not set display the resulting table here. And this is what we can do here. So what we need now is the table output function. Basically, each render function has a corresponding output function. And so here we use render table. So we'll use table output here. 
and then we simply say you know what here always um, um, display the table with the ID that we specified by this new variable name so by album table and now if we do that we reload the app then we see actually stuff changes and it's basically uh, as simple as that it's it's maybe a little bit complicated because you first need to create a selection input then you need to do stuff on the server side of things and then you also need to make sure that it's displayed on the user face again so it's a little bit of back and forth and um, this can be confusing at first but once you get the hang of it it's always the same thing basically and I think the logic behind that is um, pretty straightforward um, what is also a bit special about this which is why um, Shiny is a little bit different uh, with respect to the way it's programmed or the way we use it to program is that it uh, uses a paradigm which is called reactive programming because part of um, here of course stuff reacts to our inputs and changes accordingly and what is more interesting here is that basically things are run in a weird order or not run at all, at all. When you write a usual R script or on R markdown file, you sort of expect the code to be run one uh, code line after uh, the other. But here, things uh, basically do change. Something in the input is, um, is, um, is changed. So this code here is basically responsible for this changing stuff to be able to change. Then on the server side of things down below here, stuff is computed and then it goes back up again and says, you know what, up there, change the, the output. This is why at first it might be confusing because it's not, not like a linear, uh, linear programming. You explicitly say this, do that, do that, when this, do that. It's basically you write recipes in case something happens and then the code automatically looks at the corresponding code chunks to run. So this is reactive programming and this is what Shiny uses. So this is also quite new um, in our course here. Okay, so we have our first part covered. Let's um, go with the second row. What we will need to do here is add another selection list, which is easy now. We can simply do the same thing again. Uh, for uh, for the attributes because let's look at the final app we want to be able to select an attribute here um, from the data set and then we will also need a slider input so here this is uh, um, another input we want to use because we want to be able to filter um, filter this table according to the range you are looking at here but what we what you may notice is that if I change my attribute, say that to danceability here, then also my slider changes. So in fact, it's not a, a simple input thing that we need to he have here. We actually, this is an output that outputs an input function. So we'll need to cover that. I will show you how. And then here we will need to have a different table because as you can see here, it's an interactive table that um, uh, as, opposed, uh, as opposed to this table here, because you can't really do anything here. Here you can sort stuff and um, go through the uh, go through the rows. So we'll need a different ta uh, table here. And in the next row, then we'll need to have a plot where um, yeah, which reacts to our inputs too. Okay. So let's start by adding this um, danceable, uh, so the attribute, the attribute stuff here. We simply need to have, you know, for the song attribute, we need to have the selection and in, uh, select input again. But we need to, of course, know what um, what attributes are available. So what we need to do is get this from the specific. Um, Taylor, uh, Taylor data set 
Here, let me just copy and paste this from the lecture notes. So what we do here is we take the data set, select all the columns from the first uh, attribute to the last attribute, and then let us um, save the column names into this variable song attribute. And with that, we can simply add another select input. Let's call this, we the other one we uh, label choose album. Let's label this choose attribute. We have another label here, which is attribute. And we want to get the choices from the variable we just created. Reloading the app. No, oh, this is not the app. Where is it? There it is. Does the job just fine? It's basically the same thing we did earlier. So that was easy. Let's um, figure out how to um, how to deal um, how to create the uh, input slider now. Um, what you may notice is that we will probably need this danceability or this attributes value a couple of times because the range here is from the maximum to the minimum and the slide the initial slider positions are at some quantiles of this um, of this range uh, with respect to the selected attribute. So we'll actually need the attribute name a couple of times to compute the maximum, minimum and the two quantiles. And of course we could always write input dollar sign and then choose um, choose attribute. This is the value we want, but this creates a lot of um, code duplication which we try to avoid and therefore we want to save this the selected attribute into a variable. But things are a bit tricky here because as I said this needs to be reactive so the variable that we save it in needs to change every time we need to uh, we someone or the user changes the selection here. So this is why we, what we need actually is not just a simple variable, but what we need is a reactive expression. And this sort of just makes sure that the variable is always updated and um, whenever the input changes. So let us do this by adding on the server side of things, let us add a variable which we call song attribute and as I said we need to get a reactive expression so something that reacts which is done in shiny via reactive and then again you simply put the code uh, in between those curly brackets if you use more than one line of code you need that if you don't uh, use only one line of code you don't need it um, here I technically don't need it but again I like to do this um, so here I want to have my choose attribute. So I always want to make sure that this variable song attribute is always up to date and um, computes um, it computes the new value. What I also want to have here, just for simplicity, um, is to make this a symbol. Don't worry about it, it's just a technicality. So just make this a symbol, whatever that means, ignore it if you um, are not comfortable with that. It just helps on some functions to work with this, um, with a symbol instead of the character value you would get from the input. Okay, so we have that now and with that we can actually display uh, start displaying the a table because as we see from our um, from our table here it's just the column album song duration which is always fixed and then it is the variable it is a variable that we select here so let's um, create this table this is actually quite simple it's the same thing as before output dollar sign and then just create some new name let's call it attribute table 
and then we re render a table again. As I said, we don't want to have a regular table. We want to have an interactive table, which is called a data table. So actually this interactiveness is nothing too fancy. You simply choose a different render function and there, oops, table spelled like this, you simply from the initial data set select album, song and duration and then we want to get the value from the song attribute. And if we do it like this, let us try that. This is not... Oh, of course we will uh, need to display it first. So data table output attribute table. As you can see here, we get an error already on the console if I try to reload this app and also nothing is happening. And the reason why this uh, creates an, um, an, an error is because it uh, cannot access the song attribute value. And the thing about reactive expressions is that if you want to get a specific value, you need to treat the song attribute basically like a function. Without an argument, you simply say, call this function song attribute, which will give me the corresponding value. And now if I reload the app, then you see no new arrow appears here. And actually this table now works fine. So this is an, uh, not really a problem with reactive expressions, you need to keep that in mind, but this is something I have done wrong a lot of times um, until it really started to hammer in um, that you need to have these two parentheses to treat this reactive expressions like a function in order to get the specific value and um, then the select function will actually do its job instead of throwing an arrow. And yeah, just keep that in mind if you get a weird error message and using a reactive expression, maybe you, um, like I often did, forgot the parentheses. Okay, so we have that covered. Let's deal with the slider input. Remember, we want to filter this. Oh, let me um, just mention. Um, of course, enough, you could always manually um, um, rearrange this uh, table and you can also make sure that you cannot really uh, filter here now. So you could, for instance, manually filter for speak now in this album and um, you could also change stuff here like show how many entries are to be shown. These are, and there's a search bar as well, these are all options of, um, of this data table and to get the table we actually have in our final version of our Taylor app, um, we need to set these options. That you can do, um, or you are supposed to do in the exercises, so this is why I will leave this table now as it is. And um, just to make sure that you know what you're, uh, you're supposed to do in this render table, uh, render table function, you can simply add this options argument and there you will need to give a list and so on to um, for instance say something like page length or whatever and you can find the all of the options of this data table on this website here so you will need to do some um, figuring out what option you actually need to get the result you want this is like a typical tasks you have to do when you actually want to do something on your own, figure stuff out. So this is why I'm not giving you all the details, but I think it's manageable. At least I managed to do it, so I think you will do too. And with that, we can move uh, back to the slider. We want to create, as I said, we need uh, values like minimum, maximum of the 
range of the selected attribute and we will need two default values. We can simply create those with reactive expressions again. So I will simply copy and paste that from the lecture notes. So this reactive expression makes sure that the attribute values always correspond to the the vector of attribute uh, of song attribute values in the data set so it pulls the corresponding column from um, from the data set and with the help of that we can simply um, compute the minimum the maximum and two default values as quantiles that's simply reactive expressions again no big deal recall that if you want to um, access any of those values you will need the parentheses okay so as I said now this slider that we have we use for our input actually is an output of um, of a specific function because the slider always changes corresponding to the selected attribute and this is why we need to define it as an output first before we can then go to the user interface and declare it as an um, uh, declare it there as uh, something on the user interface. Okay, so we want to have let's call this attribute slider output. And what we need is to render or so or create a user interface. A U, uh, um, yeah, yeah, it is a user interface. So render a UI, and again. It's the same syntax, and as I said, we want to uh, we simply throw the code in between those uh, in, uh, into this function that creates whatever we want to have in this output as output later on. And as an output, we want to have a slider input. So here in this render UI, we'll actually need to uh, use slider input, which might uh, feel confusing at first because you use input in the output. Um, but that's just the way it is. Just recall that um, the output is actually be, be is supposed to be a user face input, and this is why we need to have this code here. The um, uh, the syntax of this code uh, of this function obviously doesn't change. So first we need to give it an ID. Let's call it attrib attribute slider input. I like to make the output and input variables uh, have the same name just name them with the same name basis and then input or output to the IDs according to if it is the output or the input and then we need to have a label which we simply call range and then if we look at slider input the specific um, the input specific um, arguments are minimum, maximum and values. So this is what we need here. Min is of course minval, this reactive expression. The maximum is maxval, the reactive expression. It's a reactive expression, so uh, use the parentheses. And for value, we actually want to have two values in here. And if you look at um, value it says it's a numeric vector of length uh, um, the initial value and the a numeric vector of length 1 will create a regular slider and numeric vector of length 2 will create a double ended range slider and um, so we will need to create a vector here so value is supposed to be a vector here and in there we use our two default values so default 1 and default And with that, nothing should happen yet. So there is no slider yet because we, of course, didn't uh, create it, um, put it onto the user interface. So let us go to the user interface. We have that in our second, uh, in our second sidebar panel. There we'll need to get uh, put in UI output. And then, of course, we'll need to give the ID. We call it attribute slider output. Reloading the app. 
gives us a gives us the slider that we want and of course this doesn't change anything because we didn't um, specify what to do with this slider and this is I think what you are supposed to do in the exercises let me check um, yeah uh, one of the exercises actually to implement this now so that this table here is filtered according to the two selected arguments here so I won't explain how to do this so this is as far as we go with respect to the creation of this web application in this video the remaining part of creating the uh, making sure the table looks as it's supposed to and um, uh, implementing this filtering and adding the ta uh, this uh, plot will all be done by you in the in the exercises so this is um, we'll just leave it as it is let me now shortly talk about how you can actually get your shiny application um, out to the open so if you want to share your app with others or want to upload it online Sadly, that's not as simple as in the last video where you simply just take the, the file, push it to some repository, and then it's, uh, it all works fine. It's sadly not as simple as that because what you need is a Shiny server. So the server needs to be able to handle all the Shiny commands and needs to understand what Shiny does. And the reason why this works here is because our console is basically taking up the task of being the shiny server and um, therefore if you want to publish your shiny app um, somewhere what you need to do in the exercises you need to publish it so that I can access your finished work um, you can go to uh, shiny apps io which is specifically designed to um, um, to be able to run shiny applications. If you look at pricing, um, it could be quite expensive, but of course, simply take this a free uh, free account, and then for this simple applications, you don't need to have like a lot of active hours on the server. If, for instance, your app is really popular and a lot of people accesses, then you will also create a lot of active hours, which is um, um, of course good because uh, people like your app, but still then your free account won't be able to, um, to handle all of that and then you might have to pay some money for it or create your own Shiny or your own server that can handle Shiny. Um, in any case, um, we use Shiny Apps IO in the free version here and then in R it's really straightforward to publish um, your app um, there. Once you have an account, you can click on this blue button and publish your files to your account. And if you um, click this for the first time, then it will actually walk you through uh, the process of um, linking your account to your R Studio. And once that all of that is set up, then you simply hit the button publish and then all of that is transferred to Shiny Apps IO. So it's not that complicated. I won't show it here, but in principle, this is how you do it. Yeah, all right. This is um, how you create web apps with Shiny. And with that, we're basically done with our course. And you will notice in the lecture note, there's one more additional chapter in there, which is called Choose Your Own Data Science Adventure, where I simply want to um, demonstrate a lot of things you might want to check out next if you want to learn more about R or data science and in, the, in this current version it's still empty I'm not it's not completely finished yet so it's, it isn't published but it will be soon um, um, by the latest it will be a, um, you will be able to access this um, next week at the end of next week and yeah, with that, we're basically done. I hope you enjoyed the, um, enjoyed this course. Um, I certainly had a lot of fun and um, I learned a lot as, uh, as well because I had to learn a lot of things um, before I could teach you. And I hope um, you learned a lot as well. 
And as I know, some of you are really um, enthusiastic about dinosaurs, so the, uh, this is why I saved the last, uh, the best dinosaur for the last video. And this is why I will simply end this course with the with a dancing dinosaur. And yeah, so enjoy that. And um, yeah, that that basically ends our our course. So here's the dancing dinosaur. I won't show you the, won't show you the complete video, but only until the good part st uh, starts. I'm really satisfied with this. <laughs> Apparently this is some dinosaur landscaping uh, company that shows you this dancing dinosaur. So feel free to check out um, the video yourself and with that I end this course and then see you and goodbye. <laughs>